Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Wes Welch, the lead machine learning engineer at uh, Synthetic Applied Technologies. Uh, we're a firm in Austin, Texas, and we really focus on threat mitigation, and we try to do that in three main areas. We work in modeling and simulation, uh, machine learning, and physical protection, and kind of all the intersections between those areas. Um, the purpose of why we're here at SVIP really boils down to something that uh, Admiral Bart said this morning, which is we want to allow DHS personnel to focus on high value activities um, and how that relates to 3D object detection, particularly through um, advanced annotations. Um, because as I'll talk about in a second, annotating objects in 3D is not a high value activity. <laughs> um, so the, the problem here is that manual annotation presents a lot of challenges, uh, particularly when it scales up to a 3D environment. Um, annotating is time consuming and it's tedious, uh, even in two dimensions. Um, but you can imagine if you're drawing a box around an object in two dimensions, it's as simple as clicking twice for two corners of a box around an object. Uh, when that scales to three dimensions, it takes a lot more time and um, concentration from an operator because not only do you have to put the box around the object, you have to check from every angle to make sure that that box has encompassed the entire object. Otherwise, the annotations that you use downstream to train algorithms are not good enough. Uh, so it, it becomes a lot more time consuming and a lot more tedious. Um, and when you couple that with the fact that our machine learning algorithms are getting more and more complex and therefore requiring more and more data, you kind of have this um, positive feedback loop where you're, you're spending a lot more time to create the data that you need. Um, and then you run into the issue where if a new object, uh, a new threat, or something new that you want to be able to find in, using an ATR algorithm appears, you then have to go create a bunch more data uh, because you don't have any, and then you have to retrain your algorithms. So all of these things kind of compile upon each other, which leads to our solution, which we call Segmentastic. Um, this is really focused on human-machine paired annotation. So we support a wide variety of 3D scan formats. Uh, you can do CT, DICOM, uh, as well as DICOS, and even into like point cloud, LIDAR, that kind of thing. Anything that can be represented in 3D. Um, the, the main idea here is that we do kind of an automatic first pass approximate annotation, and then we have a human expert in the loop to refine that annotation. And the main idea here is that it is much easier and much faster to make edits to uh, an approximate annotation than it is to annotate from scratch, especially in 3D, and especially when you get beyond just putting boxes around things and you want to make uh, semantic voxel level annotations. So like every pixel of that object needs to be annotated. That takes a long time in 3D. Um, yeah, and uh, also it's important to note that we feature online learning. Uh, so we have continuous improvements in our approximate annotations, um, and we're keeping track of that as well as the confidence in those annotations at all times, with the hope being that eventually you don't need the human in the loop at all because you're that good at finding the objects uh, with your approximate annotations. Um, we've done on-site testing uh, as well as third-party testing to demonstrate the time reduction uh, in, in annotations from our platform uh, as well as the uh, cognitive load reduction. and. Um, the idea was that we would at least maintain accuracy, but we found that especially with annotators who don't have experience annotating the particular objects during the tests, uh, we actually improve accuracy um, through, through using this platform, which I think is important because then you can have your more high-skilled people doing more high-skilled tasks, and you can maintain the accuracy of your annotations by using lower-skilled labor. Um, we've... Uh, Sorry, uh, so we also, uh, in this last phase, completed uh, successfully completed red teaming. Uh, so we made sure that our platform was usable, made sure we had good documentation, um, did, did a lot of stuff around making sure that we were security compliant as well. Um, and then uh, the last thing, just a recent highlight, um, we participated in a, a, a data challenge for 3D voxel annotations of threat items uh, hosted by Sandia. And while we don't have the results from that yet, uh, we do know that compared to the current manual average time of annotation uh, at the voxel level, we were able to improve on that by an order of magnitude by using this. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, this is a video, which... Okay, yes, yeah, so this is just kind of showing some, some of the platform. This is an example of what might come out from uh, the machine-assisted portion of the annotation. Uh, we find some objects in there, and we highlight the voxels that we think belong to those objects. Um, there's a lot of things you can do uh, through this. You can kind of hide the masks to see what the object looks like to make sure you got all of it. Um, and then you can, of course, 
at various levels of precision, which you control, edit the voxels that are present in the mask by adding more or removing them. Um, we also have like some rough sketching tools where you can kind of color in roughly what you think an object is and then the algorithm will go back and fill in the rest of it. Um, so like for example, you can see the laptop, it doesn't, it only shows like the really highly metallic parts. So if you ran like the, the, the rough algorithm on that, it would go back and fill in the case and fill in all the little missing parts in there as well. In the interest of time, I'm gonna skip the rest of that. Uh, and then the last thing, this is kind of the next steps that we're working on and something I'm really excited about. Uh, we call it Druid, it's digital repacking and unpacking of item data. So based, because of the process that we go through when we uh, find all of these voxel masks of all these objects, we now have intimate knowledge from a lot of different bags about which parts of that bag are represented by objects and which parts are represented by empty space. This allows us to take the object library of every object we've found, remove those from bags and stick new objects into the empty space that's in those bags. Um, and this is super important for training ATR algorithms because now instead of going through and scanning uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of bags to create a training data set, you can take your existing scanned data set and remove and replace as many objects as you want, even the same objects in different orientations to exponentially increase the amount of training data that you have available for training those algorithms. Uh, and we also uh, use synthetic data in these bags as well, so you can create really strong hybrid real and synthetic data uh, to, to train your ATR algorithms. So that's it. Um, make sure that you come to our booth. I have a demonstration of digital bag unpacking and repacking that you guys can play with uh, at, at our booth upstairs if you want. Thank you very much for the presentation. Um, so obviously, we're working very closely with traditional manufacturers. They've done a lot of work over the years in developing and improving their automated target recognition algorithms. Um, how, how is that working with your relationship with industry, or what do you see as kind of the, the pain points that industry has had over the years in developing effective algorithms, and how this may overcome some of those challenges? Uh, yeah, that's a great question, and I think we're really well suited to answer that because when we started SVIP, we were building ATR algorithms, and we quickly realized that the biggest pain point is getting high-quality annotations to train those algorithms. Um, not only do you need a, a large number of them to train your algorithms, because in 3D, the complexity is much higher because you never, you know, you, you may not know what kind of orientation an object might be in or things like that, um, but uh, also you kind of run into the issue of algorithms can only find what they're trained on. And so if you have something you need to identify that is not in your data set already, then you just have to completely start from the ground up and train a whole new algorithm. So those are the two biggest pain points that, that we see in, in that scenario, and I think we kind of solve both of them with, uh, with our platform. And I, I think you touched on this a little bit at the end, but how did you get a big enough data set to, to begin training your algorithms uh, on the algorithms? Yeah, so that's also a great question. Uh, we did not get enough data to train full algorithms, so uh, we actually kind of used, turned that into a strength. Um, so instead of using traditional machine learning approaches to find objects, we use approaches from uh, something known as few shot learning, so where you can train algorithms to recognize objects after only seeing them once or twice. So we took a lot of um, the core principles from that kind of machine learning and applied it into our algorithm. And that's why we really focus on the approximate annotation. So we don't claim that we're gonna come up with a 99% accurate annotation. What we're claiming is that we can significantly reduce the time and the cognitive burden that it, to, for you to do something you were already doing because we give you a strong approximation, which we can do after only seeing an object once or twice. And we also continuously learn as we go and we get better at better at finding those objects. Excellent, thank you. Great presentation, thank you. Thank you. So um, from the time you started this uh, human-computer pairing for annotation, um, how much has your computer algorithm improved? And where is it now and how much longer until we don't need the human? Um, that's a great question, and it depends on two things. It depends on how homogenous a class of objects is. Um, the example I like to use is comparing laptops to shoes. Um, every laptop is pretty much a flat metal rectangle, but shoes can be like the shoes that you three are wearing compared to the shoes I'm wearing, compared to the shoes of a toddler, flip-flops. Shoes can look vastly different. So for an object like a laptop, our algorithm only needs to see maybe five or 10 of them before it gets 85 plus percent confident in finding future laptops. Shoes are much harder um, because they vary so much in 
kind of how they can look. So for those, it takes you know, maybe 40, 50 times, and even still, you're probably still gonna want a human to make sure that you've got the annotation correct. Um, so it, it really depends on the kind of object. For most of the threat objects that we're looking at, um, like guns, knives, um, really like uh, very recognizable shapes and metal, like those are really easy for us to learn. Um, but then when you get into like improvised explosives, who knows the number of ways that that could appear. So that kind of needs probably a more nuanced approach to it. Okay, great, thanks Wes.